So what is the future of meat production with us now is agricultural communicator, Claire Taylor. Hi, Claire. Hi. With all the research and the evidence that we have, why are we still eating meat at all? Why are we still eating meat? Well, the, the honest answer, I guess, is people enjoy eating meat. We've done it for a long time. If the question is, should we be eating more plant-based foods? Well, of course, I'm going to advocate for meat production, but I think we've got to have space in society for choice. It's got to be a representation of a diversity of diets. But the reality is, if we look at the, the soils here in Scotland, about 85% of our farm, farmland here can't produce vegetables. It can ha it's got great grass, which we can convert with ruminants, with cattle, with sheep. We can convert that into nutrient-dense and very affordable protein for consumers. But if we were to start thinking about having more plant-based options, we're going to be thinking we've got to import that from elsewhere. Is that actually going to be the right thing to do in terms of carbon miles as well? So I, I wonder, if, because you, you, Claire, you've been you, you've done a lot of work on that and looked a lot into you know countries around the world and how they try mm -hmm. and make farming more sustainable. What, what what sort of ideas are what? I mean, we heard there that Britain's farming industry is very sustainable, but there must be improvements we can make. Definitely, and I would absolutely start by saying as well that, that farming is absolutely aware that for many years now we have been incentivised to over-cultivate our land. We have depleted our soils because we have produced too much food. And since the Second World War, there's been food security issues and, and farmers have really been driven by the government to produce too much food. And because of that, um, we're now having conversations around climate, around nature. And farmers know they have to start changing to adapting. And so many farmers, like you said, Nick, they're, they're already doing lots of things. Yes, so, how? Yeah, so if we talk about livestock, we're talking about livestock here as well. I, I've been travelling around the UK and there's regenerative farming systems where you're mob grazing cattle, you're moving them around the field, you're spreading organic matter, you're, you're allowing the soil to sequester and, and absorb more carbon, which is very good. But you're also, um, th th this report looks a lot at the, the sort of carbon element, but actually livestock is amazing for biodiversity. If it's managed well, you can really increase the, the, the species diversity of wildflowers, of fauna in our land, and farming is doing amazing things. But there's also, I mean, I visited a, a broiler, a poultry farmer recently, who was using the waste from his from his chickens to feed an anaerobic digester, which is converting this this waste product into energy, into heat that is then being put into the grid to to um, to provide energy for thousands of homes. So that kind of holistic, that circular approach is something that's really beneficial. And I have been seeing it all over the world. But actually, when you've come back here and you see what we're doing in the UK, it's very impressive. Are there targets that have to be met by people in the industry? We know that there are some in the oil and gas industry, for example, but is that maybe one of the answers that there are clear targets set for the agricultural sector to hit over however many years? So I'm really hesitant to actually have targets. And I do think for governments that that's political suicide. If you start putting a target, if you're intervening, intervening with people and telling them what to eat, I think that's it's also very worrying if we're creating this sort of us versus them narrative, which is unfortunately what a lot of these reports are doing. And we're vilifying meat in this regard. And a lot of scientists and researchers, you know, they're the shoes on the carpet. They're gathering the data. They're producing the papers. They're giving the recommendations. They're not the boots on the ground that are actually delivering for, for climate, for nature, and it's the farmers that if we, if we vilify them, if we tell people not to support meat, they're not going to actually look to improve their soils, engage in the debate, be more sustainable. So we actually need to be encouraging them in that journey. Well, I mean, it's, it's, isn't it all very well for us to say here in the UK to be, to be promoting more sustainable practices, but then you look over to places like South America or, or, or North America is when you see these enormous complexes of, of, of farms and, and animals being produced in the most awful circumstances, often producing all sorts of waste, and it's not being farmed sustainably at all. So do you draw a distinction between those two, those two types, those two models of farming? Well, I, I certainly do when I talk about it, because I focus a lot on, on UK agriculture, but I'm also very mindful recently when I've been doing a lot of travelling. I think it's we've got to be very careful to be pointing blame at other practices abroad as well because in the UK we're feeding ourselves but we're not really feeding the world but places like America, South America, they're actually contributing to sort of global food security. Do, do I agree with some of the systems? I'm going to be exploring them, I'm going to be finding out about some of these feedlots, some of these more intensive systems. It's not something that we're more suited to here in Scotland because we have a perfect climate, we've got grass, we've got rainfall, we can produce meat in a really sustainable way but in other parts of the world it is very different to here and I think... Yeah, so, so should they be going meat free because they, they, I mean, are more plant-based because you know their soil may well be, be, be perfect for, for arable farming for example. 
I think it's too narrow to look at it only within the dimension of the sort of carbon side and not actually look at the benefits that meat has, the societal benefits in terms of sustaining rural communities, providing jobs. Also, that I was saying earlier about the sort of biodiversity benefits too. I think we sometimes forget when we put things in these silos, actually it can deliver so much more. And a lot of these scientific reports, do they actually take in the true cost of accounting when it comes to carbon? So your figure there that it was, sorry, not your figure, the figure that was quoted there about 8 million cars and of carbon being removed. But actually right now there's not a standardised tool that's used to actually account for what is the true cost of farming in terms of that sequestering and storing of carbon in the soil. When we get that figure, when it's put into some of the research and the findings, we're going to get more of an accurate understanding of what farming's potential is in the carbon debate. I don't want to have you back again, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, thank you very, very much. Thank you.